Hey, better late than never. Better late than never. And, and it's been a while, right? It's time for the special Monday edition of the Classic Guitar Rock uh, Daily Update. I was gone for a few days out of town at, uh, at a funeral for my mom. So um, it was a great weekend for a funeral. Who would think at a funeral? Very, there was sadness, right? But there was also a lot of happiness and laughter, and and uh, it was actually a, a great weekend and celebration of my mom's life. So that was great. But I'm very happy to be back, back in the uh, in the command center here for the classic guitar day, day, the daily update. So thanks for joining us, and let's hop to the news, shall we? Roger Daltrey of the Who fame, he is uh, doing a solo tour. He's calling it an intimate tour of theaters and amphitheaters in the U.S. and Canada. He's also promising, he'll be doing some Who stuff, of course, but he's also promising some solo material and even some question and answer sessions. That's the thing now. You know, Getty Lee did this whole Q&A tour spoken word tour and that's kind of the cool thing roger waters did one uh so if you're cool that's kind of what you do right now but this uh daltry tour will include uh it looks like a it's starting with only nine cities boston detroit indianapolis some of the town probably more will be added um, so that's kind of cool. If you want to check out Roger Daltrey on his own, you can definitely do that. Now I'm excited about this. Are you a fan of the ELO, the electric light orchestra? I am. There are in fact no lights, but there is electricity and orchestra. Well, there are some lights. So yeah, I guess that's adequate. And of course, ELO guys, let's be honest. ELO was always Jeff Lynn, but there were other people in the band uh this article this is from ultimate classic rock it says that jeff is the only original member but i mean it really was jeff lynn anyways but they will uh play more than two dozen north american cities starting august 24th they'll start in uh let's see palm desert california and they'll wrap up in los angeles california at the end of october but in all of that, they'll be hitting places all over North America. So that would be a great show. I'm a big fan of the Jeff Lynn and the Electric Light Orchestra. I think that would be great. Now, uh, Jeff Lynn had said years ago that he, he wasn't going to tour, but he says, quote, I just got talked into it by somebody on the radio. He's talking about when they got together and played in 2013. It was for charity, and we only had two numbers. That's all we practiced for. So we had to do Mr. Blue Sky twice. <laughs> um, well, to make a long story short, he's rehearsed up, right? They, they've they practiced more stuff now. So hopefully the set list will be more than two. I mean, those are great songs, but they'll be doing uh, much more than that for this big tour. Uh, what does he say? So they did their their two their two song set, right? He said it went down so great that then the BBC invited us to the Hyde Park concert for Radio Two, and that was in 2014, and that was more of a full blown show. So probably what you can expect is something more like what happened for the Radio Two show in 2014. But Jeff Lynne, just a brilliant producer, writer, uh, just a lot of great stuff, a lot of great work that he's done over the years. It's called the over and out tour. And this is being billed as ELO's final shows, 27 North American cities after it's starting California on August 24th. And uh, we said it's wrapping up in LA. Yeah. Wrapping up in LA, but they will be in, you know, the cities you'd expect if you're doing 20, what are the 20, you know, Seattle's on there, Detroit's on there, uh, Denver, you know, the 27 towns you'd, you'd think of. Here's good news for Springsteen fans. The boss is back. Now, if you remember, he had started a tour uh, last year and they had to, they ran into problems. Okay. First, several members of the, of the touring entourage 
had the COVID. So that delayed some or canceled some shows. Then Bruce had, um, what is it called? A peptic, septic ulcer. Is that what it's called? He had, he had some health problems with his pooper. I don't know if that, I don't know if that's where the problem was, but he had some problems and, uh, he had to, he had to take a break, but the good news is March 19th, they're back. And there have been, he's made a few little stealth appearances last week. You might've saw where he snuck out and did a song with Melon Camp and uh, s- some other things. So that's great. And here's the thing about boss, the boss, his, his concerts are expensive, right? But at least when you go, I was going to say you get your money's worth. I don't know if you get your money's worth at any concert anymore, to be honest, because they're so expensive. But you at least get a full blown like a three hour show. I mean, he 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 doesn't leave anything on the stage. Right. He he gives you a great show. So that's awesome. So March 19th. Hey, that's that's tomorrow. So tomorrow. And I think it's in Phoenix. Did I see that? I think I'm not positive, but I think it's in Phoenix. Somewhere in Phoenix. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, Good news. Okay, so Bon Jovi. I was not aware of this until I just saw this. Apparently, there's a a Bon Jovi, they call it a docu-series. Now, what's a docu-series? It's a documentary that's chopped up into a series. Docu-series. Isn't that clever? So Bon Jovi... They were at the South by Southwest conference. That's that big thing that happens where cool people go, right? So there's this, this Hulu docuseries called Thank You, Good Night, The Bon Jovi Story. And apparently, I mean, everyone at, at, at South by Southwest just loves Bon Jovi because they like were greeted like native sons, even though Austin, Texas is a long ways from New Jersey. But they were there, and uh, the crowd loved it. And and this docuseries, it's actually been going on since... How did I miss this? It's been going on since 2022. The first episode filmed in 2022 uh, set the stage for Bon Jovi's impending 40th anniversary, which took place last year. And it sees the band... It's like Hard Knocks, only with a rock band, sounds like. Okay? Uh, so it... It goes through all of that, and then they even chronicle the the throat problems that John Bon Jovi was having. He had uh, an atrophied vocal cord, and so it goes all through this. I'm gonna have to check this out. I haven't. I I, I missed this. I didn't know there was uh, anything like this. So that's pretty cool. Marlon checking in. Marlon says, am I late? No, you're late. (laughs) He's right. I'm late. That's right. It's my fault. I am late, but better late than never. Um, And and hey, right back at you, Marlon. Thank you for checking in today. By the way, let me just throw a plug out. You can email me. You can chime in just like Marlon did, and that's awesome. But you can also email me, classicguitarrock at mail.com and ask me anything. We have a great email we're about to get to here in a minute. Okay, from the especially for guitar nerds file, and I'm one, you know who you are, especially for the guitar nerds file, I'm surprised this hasn't happened yet. I was shocked when I read the headline, but then when I got to thinking, I'm like, well, it hasn't. Joe Satriani and Steve Vai are doing their first ever collaborative piece It's titled Sea of Emotion Part 1. Now, they've done the G3 tour forever. So they played live together multiple times, but they have never uh, done a song together where they play together on a song. This is the first time. The full-length track arrives on March 29th, complete with the video by Satriani's son, Zizi. So Joe's son, Zizi Satriani, is a filmmaker. And in fact, he made a like a documentary a few years ago. And it was really cool. So ZZ is, is on board uh, as the filmmaker or the, the, the video, the video maker, whatever. He's a guy that's making the video. Um, that'll be cool. Satriani and Vi have known each other for over 50 years. Steve Vi used to take guitar lessons 
from Joe Satriani. And apparently Satriani was, he, he did not, he was not easy. If Steve showed up and he hadn't practiced, then Joe would just send him home. Go home. You didn't practice. Come back after you've practiced. Tough, tough guy. And of course, as mentioned, they've worked together with the G3 for, well, since like, what, 94, 93, something, something like that. Long time, but they've been friends for a long time. I'm surprised this is the first time they've actually worked on a recording together. That should be fun. We got some journey news. You know, I love the journey. So let's talk about journey. Specifically about Ross Valerie. Ross Valerie has a new album out. We've talked about it a little here. Um, He's talked a little bit about the split he had with Journey. Actually, the second split he had with Journey. He talks about it. Uh, He tells Rolling Stone, quote, What an amazing experience. I am so blessed to have spent the better part of 50 years in a band that's remarkable. All the fine players and singers that have come through the room that I had the privilege of performing with, including the current players. These are all brilliant, talented people, whether they are present in the band or not. So class act. Ross Valerie, he he could start, you know, talking about how he was dealt poorly and all of this, but he he maintains the high road. Um, so he doesn't really go into details much about about it, other than uh, the the first time he left was back in '86, right before Raised on Radio and trivia. Who replaced Ross Valerie? Does anyone know? Do you guys know? I bet you know. Yes, that's who. Randy Jackson of uh, American Idol. Randy Jackson, dog. He was the guy who replaced Ross Valerie. So when you watch those videos from Raised on Radio, Be Good to Yourself and Girl Can't Help It, it, it was a pretty good album. There were some good tunes on that album. Well, there's the dude... Uh, Randy was a bit skinnier in 1986, but you see the dude with the, with the kid and play haircut, right? Playing bass, Randy Jackson. And when uh, Ross and Steve Smith were kicked out in 2020, guess who they brought in? Randy Jackson. So the, the, the 96 departure, I think he just left. I don't think he was canned. I think he just left. Uh, But then in 2020, Steve Smith and Ross Valerie were kind of were kind of kicked out. Um, Valerie and drummer Steve Smith were accused by Neil Sean of attempting to stage a boardroom coup to take over the group. Valerie denied it and countersued. Both sides later reached an out of court agreement that's been described as amicable. So there you go. So Ross is not slinging dirt. Class act. Classy guy. Great bass player, by the way, and vocalist, right? You think of the vocals of Journey. He was part of that collage of great background vocals and and everything else. Marlon says, both Vi and Satch are great players, but I don't care for all the whammy bar theatrics. There are some whammy bar theatrics, though I think they've, if you see the, 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 the current stuff, doesn't seem to be as much of that. At least I'm not sensing there is. It doesn't seem to be. But they're both phenomenal players and both just great guys, apparently. Every interview I've seen with either of them, I, they seem like they're cool guys. So um, I think it's cool that they're doing something together. Let's go to the, the mailbag. Again, you can email me, classicguitarrocketmail.com. Now, this one. I was super jazzed when I saw this email because this is something I would love to talk about. And this is a debate that I've had. So this is perfect timing. You know, I've been jazzed about the new Priest album. Listen to it more uh, this weekend. Invincible Shield. Listen to it this morning. I love it. Listen to this, this email. Hey, Jeremy, my buddy and I have argued for years. Who is better, Priest or Maiden? What do you think? I have a nuanced answer for this. If we were to stop 
1984, I would go with Priest. Okay? Priest was always my metal band. I mean, I, I always liked Maiden and like, like uh, Peace of Mind and Power Slave, two of my favorite, out they're awesome albums. If we were to stop at 84, and you know, that's maybe not fair because Priest had several albums out by 84. Maiden only had like, what, four? Um, I'll, I'll even go a little later. If we would have stopped mid it, well, that doesn't help much. My point is if we were to stop in the eighties, I would say Judas priest, they would be my pick as the, 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 the better band personal opinion. However, after Defenders of the Faith, and this is where priest fans want to fight me in the parking lot, I'm okay. I'm okay with that, and I'll take on any of you. I'll take on all of you, one at a time, of course, but I'll take you all on, okay? Priest jumped the shark with Turbo and proceeded to jump said shark clear up until about Firepower. Firepower is not a bad album. Invincible Shield is a very good album. Don't, don't come at me with painkiller. Okay. I don't know what it is about all these people that think painkiller is so painkiller is not that good. Not that good. It's about number 11 of the 19 priest albums. I think painkiller is 19 is, is 11 or maybe even 12, maybe 13 painkiller is not that good. It's just not sorry. And of course, Turbo and Ram It Down. Any the I love Ripper Owens. The Ripper albums. Okay. Nostradamus. Angel of Retribution. They're just sorry. I didn't leave them. They left me. So where was I at with this? If I'm if I'm if I'm talking from the beginning of the band to current with both bands. I got to go with Maiden because Maiden's albums, uh, I mean, obviously some albums are better than others, but none of Maiden's albums ever dipped to the level of sewage that some of the, the, and I hate, I'm sorry I have to use that word sewage, but some of the priest stuff in the nineties and tooth was not good. Sorry. And, and this is, coming from a priest fan. I love priest. So if I'm looking at the entirety of the catalog, I'd have to go with maiden because maiden, what here's priest super high, super, 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 super high in 1986. <laughs> then it kind of pops up for firepower. And then it's up the good news. They're back up. Whereas maiden is like this. They're up here. They drop down a little bit for some they never sunk as low. They never jumped the shark. Okay. Even with the blaze years, they still had some good stuff, right? The blaze, the maiden stuff with blaze is much better than the priest stuff with Ripper. And I like Ripper. Don't get me wrong. I love maiden. I love priest. So that's, that's the nuanced answer. If we're stuck, if we're stopping at 84, 85 range, I I'll go with priest all day long. But if you're looking at the entirety of the catalog, I got to go with Maiden. So that's that's the correct answer. Matt, that's from Matt C in DC. Thank you, Matt, for chiming in or, or emailing us. Any of you can email me, classicguitarrocketmail.com. I'll even take hate mail from all the Priest fans who I just defended when I said Painkiller wasn't good. I'm ready for you. Send it. Bring it on. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll do it all again tomorrow. It's a classic guitar rock daily update. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.